Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you on YouTube tonight. I am Apostle Carmen Haywood, and I just bring you greetings in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Stay with us as long as you can, all right? Stay with us as long as you can. Those of you on Instagram, stay with us as long as you can. We're going to log on to Facebook Live at this time. Amen. So I want to say welcome to each and every one of you. I bring you greetings in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I am Apostle Carmen Haywood. Um, I am the senior pastor of PIPW Ministry um, here in Raleigh, North Carolina. So if you see me looking this direction, I am looking at YouTube. See me looking at this direction, I'm looking at Instagram. And if you see me looking straight, I'm looking at Facebook Live. So I want to say thank you to each and every one of you that is joining on tonight. Um, this is on my personal page, so I do know, you know, we're going to have some people that are in church. We're going to have some people that are not in church. Amen, because I have over 5,000 friends. So with that being said, you know, I don't go live on my ministry page, but what I do is I go live on my personal page. Amen. Thank you, Sister Debbie. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, and so with that being said, it's to reach more souls. Amen. It's to reach more souls. Uh, so those of you on, I'm sorry, those of you on YouTube tonight, you know, uh, share with your followers, um, share the video, you know, um, those of you on Instagram, share with your followers and share the broadcast. All right. Those of you on Facebook, y'all know what to do. All right. I see y'all hitting those hearts already. Listen, um, it's going to be an awesome teaching tonight. And what God had put in my spirit is going to bless many of you. Amen. So before we dive into the teaching, hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. God bless you, Sister Todd. I see you tonight. Um, God bless you, Sister Kamaya. I see you tonight. Um, take the time to share. Just share and invite someone. Tag your family. Tag your friends. Listen, even if the person is not in church, listen, tag them. Because this information is going to bless many people tonight. All right? So with that being said, I just want to um, tell you all about our fundraisers that we have. We do have a couple fundraisers going on because we are raising funds for our new building. Amen. We are trying to get a new building here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Amen. We have a building that we're looking at. Amen. Uh, but it's going to cost us some money, you know, to get into the building. So with that being said, uh, we need your support. Amen. We need your prayers, but we also need your support. Amen. And the Bible says, you know, you have not because you ask not. Right? Amen. And so, you know, we're not begging, but we're asking, amen, if you would be so kind, you know, to sow into PIPW ministry. Amen. Um, you know, and just allow the spirit of the Lord to speak to you, you know, concerning um, the seed amount. You know, we don't have a specific amount, but we do have a goal um, that we're trying to reach. Amen, which is three to four thousand dollars, which is a lot. It seems like a lot, but you know, with great participation and you know, those that are willing to just be a blessing, you know, we can reach that goal. I know we can. Amen. If God blessed us two and a half years ago, you know, to be in the place that we're in now. I know that he's more than able, amen, to bless us and keep us, you know, in the place that we desire to be in. So with that being said, amen, I just want to encourage you all, you know, to get your best seed in the ground tonight. Um, you can name your seed Building Fund, amen, you can name your seed Building Fund. Um, and with that being said, you know, we're going to move forward and I want to tell you the fundraisers that we do have. So we do have one fundraiser um, and it is a raffle, but before we go to that, let me go to this right here. It looks like I had to exit on Facebook. So let me exit on Facebook and we're gonna come back because the internet connection is not where it needs to be. Amen, it is not where it needs to be. So we're going to log off to Facebook. We're gonna log off Facebook and we're gonna come back on, which should be very easy. We're gonna try it again. Let's see what happens here. Yes, and I want to say thank you all for your prayers once again and support, you know, in our ministry. Um, because God is doing something amazing here, you know, and the saints of God are truly, truly grateful um, how God is moving. You know, he's healing. He's delivering and setting uh, people free, you know, here in our church. And so... We are forever grateful. Amen. Forever grateful. Y'all bear with me for a second here. All right. Because I got to tap some names and I got to tag a few people in here again. Amen. So just bear with me for a moment. But those of you on Instagram want to say hello, hello, hello. Good evening. Yes. We're going to talk tonight from the topic, the pastor versus the prophet. 
And I'm going to explain to some of you some things that you may not have ever known, you know, about the role of the prophet, um, the difference of the prophet and the pastor, right? Because, you know, a lot of people just don't know. Amen. A lot of people just don't know. And so with that being said, amen, um, it's, it's important that you be taught. You know, it's important that you be taught. So just bear with me for a moment here. I didn't think we were going to get logged off, but I see we have. <laughs> so just bear with me, if you will. And those of you that are on YouTube, um, I know that you get this broadcast late. Well, not when it's live, rather. You get it. And I want you to type your prayer request. Because some of you that are connected to us, I know you need prayer. <laughs> Amen. So with that being said, you know, go ahead and um, put your prayer request in the comments. All right. So once I see that you have, um, you know, viewed the broadcast and you've heard the word and the teaching on tonight, that, you know, your prayer request will be able to lift up before the Lord. Amen. We'll be able to lift it up before the Lord. So I think I have everybody in here. Let me double check again. All right. It looks right. Okay. Let's let's try this one more time. <laughs> All right. We're going to try this again, I think. Okay. Let's see. Yes. Hello. Hello on Instagram. How are you? Blessings to you, Minister Adam. Got to turn it this way. Here we go. All right. We had some technical difficulties. Yeah, so you were on Facebook Live? Yeah, we're trying to log back on. Um, it looks like we're back on. Let me see. Let me see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Amen. The internet connection is, is, is down in my area, but our devices, you know, we're able to still use. So with that being said, everything should be okay. So let's see. All right, Minister Adam, can you tell me if Facebook is okay now? Let me know if we're up and running. All right, I'm just going to keep on going. Just keep on talking. Um, and prayerfully, it won't go out. It looks like I got a couple bars right here. Okay, so let's move forward. All right, so we had some prayer shawls. All right, some called them talits, prayer talits, but they are a point of contact. Amen, they are a point of contact. And so with that being said, we have some in stock. All right, so here's the, perp, the pink, white, and gold. All right, we had the pink, white, and gold. We also have the black. We say black, but it's like a navy blue. It's really dark, okay? The dark white and gold, okay? The dark, I said the dark blue, white, and gold, all right? <laughs> Here's another one, dark blue, white, and gold, all right? And then we have the, they say the traditional blue, right? White and gold, okay? Then we have another um, dark blue, white, and gold, all right? And we have the pink, white, and gold. There's another one there. I know the ladies love these, right? <laughs> yes. Um, and then we have a beautiful teal color. We have a beautiful, beautiful teal color, okay? Um, and these prayer shawls, some call them talits. They are only $50, all right? They're only $50. And I will pray over it, and I will anoint it for seven days, okay? And then I will send it to you, all right? This is a beautiful teal color. And somebody, I know somebody's going to get this tonight, all right? And we also have the pink, white, and gold, okay? Just to show y'all again, for those that are just joining, I want to say welcome on tonight. Welcome, welcome. All right, but we do have some prayer shawls, prayer to leaks, amen? Um, and they're on our website, okay? So with that being said, go to the website and go ahead and purchase um, your prayer shawl. Amen. It's a point of contact. Lay it on your bed. You know, you can you can wrap up in it when you're not feeling well. Uh, while you're praying, of course, you know, wrap up in your prayer shawl, your prayer to leap. Amen. And just let the spirit of the Lord continue to touch you. Amen. And let God continue. Amen. To have his way. Hallelujah. And so we thank God for that. All right. That's that. <laughs> Amen. Now, we also have another... Um, we, I was talking about the fundraisers in the, in the beginning, in the first video. So we have a fundraiser, which is our laptop. We have a laptop fundraiser, okay? Um, and, and this is a raffle. All right, this is a raffle. And the raffle drawing will be um, on the 30th. It'll be on the 30th, yes, the end of this month. So I want to tell you just a little bit about this laptop, okay? I'm going to show you all. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, all right? Now, these little smears, these, you might see. That's because I had oil on my hand. <laughs> all right. So listen, you're going to get this. It's anointed. Okay. It's anointed. But this is a Chromebook. All right. This is an actual Chromebook. All right. And it is an Asus. Asus Chromebook. Okay. Somebody needs a new laptop. 
listen so all you need to do is um get your raffle ticket that's it and they only five dollars okay so buy five of them listen buy five all proceeds go to our church all right so can y'all see that beautiful beautiful see how nice and large that screen is and there is a protector on it okay it is brand new all right it's coming right out the box and right out the bag okay so this is a beautiful laptop and we do have it for raffle right now um and so the tickets once again are only five dollars now let me tell you a little bit about it so it is an asus chromebook all right greetings to you sister carol um it is 15.6 inches um it has four gigabytes for memory you can you can also add more memory on it if you want to okay um there is a two-year warranty that comes with this automatically all right it also is wi-fi and bluetooth ready okay so it's coming already ready for you you know for your business for your personal affairs whatever you got to do amen but here is this beautiful laptop now we have our tickets all right and we're starting at 75 because you know all my church members um they took some to their jobs you know and some of the church you know on sunday they were able to purchase some so we're starting at 75 so this is what your ticket would look like all right i don't know if y'all can see it it's probably backwards it's probably backwards right i know facebook is backwards but instagram usually comes up you know the right way you gonna try it again e okay and so with that being said it says prophetic impact prayer and word ministry building fund raffle ticket fundraiser all right and your donation is five dollars for a chance to win and the prize is a 15.6 inch laptop all proceeds go to our building fund the drawing once again will be on april the 30th and thank you for your support all right so that's what your ticket will say so once you purchase your ticket tonight what i would do is if you're number 75 you purchase one then you'll be 75 okay and i would take a picture i put your name up at the top with your email and your phone number that's all you got to do is send that okay with your five dollars you will send your name your email and your phone number all right on cash app uh paypal we even have zale so in the message all right sister carol says i'll be sending uh money for three tickets all right so that's fifteen dollars amen and so sister carol i'm going to give you these first three okay since you said that you were the first one so you get 75 76 and number 77 all right you'll get these three right here sister carol all right and if anyone else wants some please let me know now okay before we get into the teaching tonight all right but these will be your numbers sister carol i'm going to put these to the side okay i gonna put these right over here all right and i would kindly you know take a picture of it so those of you that are in different cities and states it works great it works great because you know we even had a tv you know we had a 61 61 inch tv and um you know a man of god had won it and he was all the way in Philadelphia. So we were able to get the TV to him, right? So this laptop, we will also ship to you if you are in a different city or state. Amen? Come on. So you don't have to be in North Carolina to be a part of this uh, fundraiser, okay? And the next one, whoever purchased, will start at 78. All right, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82. All right, so whoever wants five tickets, come on, we're going to do it like this. These will be your five, all right? <laughs> So whoever wants these five right here, just, just say it. Apostle, I want those five. Come on. $25. Send your $25 seating, your $25 donation for a chance to win this beautiful, beautiful laptop. All right. If you want it, just say, Apostle, I take these five right here. And your number would be 78, 79, 80, 81, and 82. Going once, going twice, going three times. Ain't nobody saying nothing. <laughs> Listen, as the message is going forth, you may say, Apostle, give me those five. All right. And if that's you tonight, then I'll kindly give you these five right here. Amen. But we have many tickets left. Okay. We have many tickets left. And this is your chance to win um, this beautiful, beautiful laptop. All right. Moving forward. Amen. Moving forward. Nobody wants those five that was in my hand. That's okay. <laughs> God bless you, Tequila, tonight. Let me greet some of you. God bless you, Sister Katrina. Yes, uh, Prophetess Tanika. Hello, woman of God. Um, Sister Debbie, thank you for sharing tonight. Amen. We got Prophet Elliot with us tonight. God bless you, man of God. Um, Elder Arthena. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, I can see you all on tonight. Um, Sister Kamaya. Um, Evangelist Stephanie. 
Blessings to you. Evandis Arlene, I see you hitting those hearts. All right, listen, we're going to move forward, okay? All right, I will send my email. Awesome, Sister Carol. Thank you for supporting our building fund. Listen, I'm telling you all, God is amazing. And I pray that you win, Sister Carol. I pray that you win. All right, to God be the glory. Let's put this laptop up. And I got to take my time because it's precious. <laughs> all right, it is very, very precious, and I don't want anything to happen to it. All right, so let me uh, just put this up real quick. We're going to talk tonight from the topic, the pastor versus the prophet. Now, we're going to dive in because there is a misconception about the pastor and the prophet. Some people just don't know, <laughs> you know, um, the mantle of the prophet, the mantle of the pastor, the mantle you know that rests upon the pastor the prophet and a lot of people don't know also the office of the pastor and the office of the prophet and so god has been dealing with me and this is how we got here to this teaching because there are many people who believe they need a pastor when they really need a prophet and then there are many people who just depend on the prophet but they're in need of a pastor. Stay with me. Stay with me. I'm telling you, it's going to be a good teaching tonight. <laughs> Somebody shout, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready for this teaching. If you're ready, I want you to type in the comments. I am ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Come on. If you're ready tonight, I want you to type, I'm ready. Come on. If you really, 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 you know, want to hear the difference of the pastor and the prophet, I want you to just type, I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Amen. Um, I want to open up with a word of prayer. Amen. Um, because we really want the spirit of the Lord to move on this broadcast. We know that God is here. Amen. But I really want the people of God to grasp this teaching to the point to where you understand what it is that you need in your life. Amen. Because you can be in the wrong place at the wrong time and you're not getting what it is that the father has for you. Amen. So I'm, I'm going to pray tonight that, you know, every ear will be open to hear what thus saith the Lord. I'm going to pray tonight. Hallelujah. That the Holy Spirit, amen, will just have his way in, in this word and his teaching on tonight and that every, um, um, the vice of the enemy, you know, anything that Satan would try to do to come in and, you know, disrupt this teaching that it would be annihilated by the power and the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. So pray with me tonight. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father, we come before your throne of grace on tonight. Father, just saying thank you. Father God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, Father God. You are so merciful towards each and every one of us, Father. So for this, we say thank you. Father God, we take this time to enter into your courts with praise. We enter into your courts with thanksgiving. Father, we say thank you for just life on tonight. Hallelujah. We, we thank you for the activity of our limbs and the articulation of speech, oh God. We just say thank you, Father. Hallelujah for all that you have done, oh God. We thank you for salvation, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you for your Holy Spirit on tonight, God. We just say thank you for all things, Father, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. And Father, we take this time to repent of our sins. Lord, we ask right now, God, that you would create in us a clean heart, oh God, and renew within us the right spirit on tonight. In the name of Jesus, oh God, any and every sin that we have committed, whether in word or deed, Lord, we ask that you would just wipe the slate clean right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That you would begin to give your people a new start and a new beginning on life in the name of Jesus in the areas oh God that they may have fallen short in the name of Jesus oh God I just pray tonight that as they take the time to repent God hallelujah that you will wash their hearts that you will wash their hands on tonight in the name of Jesus wash their spirits again father in the name of Jesus oh God and father we thank you that you are faithful and just to forgive us for all sin now Holy Spirit have your way on tonight Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, have your way. Oh, God, we ask that you come on into this space. Hallelujah. Come on into this place, Holy Spirit, and have your way on tonight, oh, God. In the name of Jesus, speak to your people once again, Father. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, yes, Lord, that they will be understanding. You commanded in your word, oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That after getting all, that we are to get an understanding. So, Father, we thank you right now. Hallelujah. For a great understanding of your word and even the teaching on tonight. 
We thank you, Father, that it shall be simple, hallelujah, to where a child can hear this teaching, hallelujah, or, or someone who is, is old, of old age would hear this teaching, and it will be so simple, oh God, that they will be able to understand what it is that you are saying unto them, hallelujah. For God, you are speaking in this hour to your church. You are speaking in this hour to your people in such a peculiar way. So Father, we say thank you, hallelujah. God, you are equipping us for your return, so we say thank you and hallelujah. God, we give you the highest praise on tonight, oh God, because you have not forsaken us, hallelujah. You will never leave us nor forsake us, oh God. You will be with us even until the ends of the earth. So Father, we say thank you, hallelujah. Oh God, I am share. yes Lord, hallelujah. We thank you on tonight, oh God, for your love, hallelujah, your steadfast love in the name of Jesus. We thank you on tonight, hallelujah. Can I just get somebody to praise God with me? Don't let me praise him by myself, hallelujah. But clap your hands where you are, lift your hands where you are, hallelujah. Open your mouth where you are and give your God some praise on tonight and begin to thank him, hallelujah. Hey, glory to God for all that he has done and all that he is getting ready to do. Father God, we love you tonight. Oh, yes, 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 yes. We thank you, oh God, for all that you have done up until this point and what you are about to do, oh God. And it's in Jesus' mighty name I do pray. And I bind the works of the enemy now. Any distraction, any uh, technical difficulties that would try to happen, uh, we bind the works of the enemy now. And I loose the fire of God, hallelujah, to burn up any uh, activity of Satan right now in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. There shall be no distractions, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it now, Father, and it's in Jesus' mighty name we do pray, amen and amen. Glory to God. Um, the way that I got to this teaching um, on tonight and, you know, God was really dealing with me because there are many people um, who don't understand, you know, the mantle of the pastor and the mantle of the prophet. Um, and there are some of you, your pastor may be a prophet, you know, or your pastor may be um, a pastor with a prophetic anointing on their life. So, so there is a difference. There is a difference. And um, many people are in search of a prophet um, and not realizing that they also need a pastor. Okay. Um, you know, you have those who, you know, just lean that depend on one thing and I'm going to break it down. Um, and it's good to, to, to lean and depend on one thing, meaning that if you have a pastor, that is good because you'll get a foundation in the word. You know, your pastor's job is to shepherd you. Yes, Jesus is the chief shepherd, but he has placed pastors um, in this earth, amen, to be able to teach his people um, according to Ephesians chapter four, verse 11. So because of that, people of God, amen, he has placed some pastors in position, Hallelujah to 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 minister amen to teach his people and to lead his people and so with that being said it's a blessing amen to have a pastor now um if your pastor once again I got to say it has a prophetic calling on their life or they are also a prophet you have to understand that there are going to be times where the prophet is going to over exceed the pastor hear me because a, a, a prophet is always a prophet L let me just say that again a prophet prophets are born amen 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 prophets are born so a prophet is born in his or her uh, uh mother's belly so with that being said um the pastor is not born um the pastor is a calling all right so there is a difference and i want you to stay with me tonight because i'm going to break down the definition of the two so the definition of the pastor is this, uh, a pastor is a minister or a teacher that is in charge of a Christian church or a Christian ministry. All right. Um, they're also, a pastor is also a shepherd. Okay. A pastor, um, is one who causes the people to eat. All right. Um, now when you, when you hear shepherd, um, you also think about sheep. 
okay? And we know that the shepherd, amen, is one who uh, tends to the sheep, okay? That's in the natural. And I'm talking about a real shepherd, you know, that is, that is in a, 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 a um, an area, amen, that is in on land. You know, you have the, God bless you, amen, Apostle Peters, God bless you tonight. So you have the, the, the shepherd in the natural who is tending to the sheep, right? God bless you, Overseer Damon. Pray for me tonight, amen. You have the shepherd that is over the sheep, right, in the natural. And so what happens is um, their job is to tend to the sheep, tend to the flock, keep the flock together, right, um, uh, to also nurture, amen, through the word of God and give them the things that they need and the tools that they need to live a Christian life, okay? So the role of the pastor is weighty. It's a heavy, it's a heavy responsibility because the pastor is over a group of people. All right. Um, and so that pastor has to be also called to pastoral ship. Okay. That you can't just wake up one day and say, I want to be a pastor. It doesn't work like that. Most of your life, you've probably been helping people or you have the ability, um, to, to teach or to help a group of people. So you may have been in administration on your job. You may have been in, you know, you might've been a family administrator, which means that you're able to bring everybody together, you know? And so, you know, before you got ordained as a pastor within the church, amen, your, your family might've been saying things to you like you know you're the one that keeps everything together or you're the pillar of the family amen come on let me let me teach tonight hallelujah and some of you amen that's how you realize that you have a pastoral calling on your life amen so 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 that is something that comes a little later now i'm going to talk about the prophet in a minute amen but the the pastor amen also has a, a love for people Okay, you cannot be a pastor and don't love people. No, 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 no. They, they, the, the two go hand in hand. Okay, you have to have a love for people. You have to have a love for God's people. All right, why a love just for people and then God's people? I'm gonna tell you why. Because everybody that comes to church is not, you know, they're not labeled as God's people. What am I saying? You you may have sinners that come inside of the church, and I'm talking to the pastor now, the role of the pastor, right? You have the, the sinner that comes in, so they don't know what everybody else knows. And, and, and the pastor's job, amen, excuse me, is to bring that, that soul in and, and to, to help that soul, you know, to get saved through the word of God and through prayer and, you know, just, just through... Um, the moving of God's spirit, amen, that, that that soul would get the revelation that Jesus Christ is Lord, amen. And so, you know, through the teaching and the preaching of the word of God, you know, that, that sinner comes in to the church house, um, you know, and, and hears the gospel and hears the word and hears the teaching, however they hear it, amen, they have heard it, right? And so with that being said, that is what leads one to the altar. It leads that person, you know, to, 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 to want to be saved, you know, and there's a saying, you know, we pray all the time, you know, what must I do to be saved? Amen. And so that's how many of us, we got saved. I know that's how I got saved. Amen. I, I heard the gospel, praise the Lord. I, you know, when I was, before I came a member of a church, you know, it was the pastor who was up preaching and teaching the word of God. And, you know, the Lord, the Holy spirit, amen, got in my feet. <laughs> and before you knew it, I was up on the altar, amen, with my hands lifted, giving my life to Jesus. And so with that being said, amen, it, it takes the, you know, a voice, amen. And most of the time it is a pastor, you know, and you will hear sayings like, you know, you give the pastor your hand and give God your heart, right? And, and, and that's how, you know, salvation works, amen. Somebody Talk, was speaking the word of God. Somebody was talking about Jesus. Hallelujah. Whether it was a guest preacher, whether it was, you know, a, a minister, whoever. Amen. But, but I'm talking about salvation in this aspect because that's how one gets saved. But most of the time, amen, it comes through the pastor, right? And then once the person gets saved, it's the pastor's job to teach them the word of God. Amen. It's the pastor's job to teach them the word of God. Now, I'm glad we got all that out about the pastor. Because a pastor is also a spiritual overseer, okay? And, and, and a pastor can be a male or a female, 
All right. So we're going to kill some, some, some false doctrine tonight where people believe, you know, that a woman cannot pastor. Yes, a woman can pastor. And the way that we know this is because, you know, Deborah, amen. Many know her as a prophetess, amen, but she was also a woman in leadership. So with that being said, leaders, amen, when you hear leadership, it is one who leads the people. Okay, so she was a mighty woman of God who led the people, glory to God. And so there were different ones in the Bible, females, um, who had a leadership position. Okay, so with that being said, we're we going to cancel that, you know, that, that lie um, that, that people say women cannot pastor. All right, they can. Okay, and some call them shepherdress. Okay, shepherdress, and then you have the shepherd. All right. Um, and what it is, is they, they cover a man, um, and they have, uh, spiritual care and watch over, um, a numerous, uh, numerous, uh, persons. That's what the definition says, which means numerous people. So, so they have the ability, they have the grace, they have the compassion. And I'm talking about the pastors. Now they have the compassion and the grace that comes from God to be able to lead numerous people. Okay, so is everybody clear on the role and the office of the pastor? I, I pray tonight that you are clear on that. All right, now, now let's get to the prophet, which everybody gets excited about the prophet. But the truth of the matter is this. <laughs> when you are a true prophet of God, people love you to a certain extent. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I just want to put that out there. Everybody loves the prophet, and I'm going to tell you why. Everybody loves the prophet because the prophet speaks the word of the Lord. And a lot of times people believe that when the prophet comes, they, they're coming with a blessing. Well, if you read your Bible, you will see, amen, there were many prophets, hallelujah, that didn't just bring blessings. They also brought judgment. Amen. They also brought, yeah, I know it's going to get quiet right here. Listen, they brought judgment. Hallelujah. That they began to tell the people, get back in alignment with God and do it quickly. Because if you don't, you can lose your life. Okay. We don't see much of that anymore. Amen. Because now we have prophets who have risen that want to be liked. Well, the truth of the matter is, ha, ah, glory to God. When you submit to your your prophetic calling for real for real you're not releasing blessings upon people but you're hearing from god concerning his people and what is the will of god for their life there's a difference there's a difference and so this is where you get the terminology false prophet because we have so many false prophets that have risen that are speaking nothing but blessings let me let me let me tell you people of god there are so many people that are on their way to hell because they have no idea hallelujah what it means amen to really live right okay and even if a prophet is telling them that holiness is the way you have people listen to this because because there's a flip side to the pastor and the prophet. You have people who would rather run to the pastor, hear me, instead of listening to the prophet. Oh, we're going to hit it, right? We're going to hit it tonight. Listen. Listen, listen, listen. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, man of God. Come on. Hallelujah. He said a whole bunch of renegades running around. You know what I call them prophets going wild. I call them prophets going wild. Now, don't nobody take that title. That's going to be my book, okay? Y'all heard it here first. Now, now, prophets going wild. I will write the book. I have to write the book because there are too many prophets that are not really hearing from the Lord. They have a gift, but they don't know how to tame the gift. Come on, somebody. And when you have a prophet who wants to be liked all the time and wants the people to clap, all the time let, let me let me encourage you you're not pleasing god you're just pleasing the people jesus have mercy all right all right you can't be a people pleaser and be a prophet of the lord hiya by shape hallelujah listen listen you have to speak what thus say of the lord whether they like you or not whether whether they invite you to come back or not because the truth of the matter is if god sends you in a place or in a region your job is not to get claps Come on here. Hallelujah. Your job is not to even be light. Come on. Your job, hallelujah, is to release what God is really saying so that the people, oh, help me, Holy Ghost tonight, can be drawn back to the Lord. God don't care about our titles. 
You could be archbishop. He don't care. Come on, because if you in sin, he will send a prophet to tell you, drop the title. Go back and do your first works all over again. Repent. Hello? Repent because you're on your way to hell and that's not God's will for your life. Let me calm down. Let me bring it on in. Hallelujah. So I can teach tonight and not preach. I, I'm really trying, Prophetess T. <laughs> Pray for your sister. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. So this is the time we're in. Okay? And what God is... Ah, I got to say it. Who Jesus. I got to say it. The false prophets, some of them are getting ready to die off. Hear me. Hear me. They're getting ready to die off because they are a false witness for Jesus. And many people, oh, Jesus have mercy, who don't understand in the body of Christ and outside of the body of Christ, don't understand what true prophecy is. Now, true prophecy is the spirit of Christ. Listen, listen, prophecy, hallelujah, is the spirit of Jesus Christ. That's it. That's it. Come on here. That, that's it in a nutshell. Come on, somebody. So when the prophet is coming to you, they're telling you what thus saith the Lord. Now, if you are in obedience to God, the prophet may speak a blessing over your life. But if you are in disobedience, it's the prophet's job to be able to hear from God concerning you. Now, Let's talk about the prophet. Let me give you the definition. The definition of a prophet is a person regarding, regarded as an inspired teacher or a proclaimer of the will of God. Did y'all hear that? Did you hear that? I'm going to read it again. A prophet or a prophetess is a person regarded as an inspired teacher. Now, there's a difference because you have many teachers, but the prophet is an inspired teacher. Who inspires us? Come on, somebody, because I'm a true prophet. Come on, it's some prophets on this live. Who inspires us? Who inspires us is the Holy Ghost. Hey, hallelujah. Come on, I'm going to read the definition again because we're not just teachers. We are inspired. Ah, we are inspired teachers. Come on. So it's a person regarded as an inspired teacher. Mm-hmm. Or a proclaimer of the will of God. Now, the pastor teaches you the word of God. But the prophet, ah, glory to God, proclaims the will of God concerning you. See the difference? See the difference? See the difference? Now, you have many people, I got to go back to it, and I got to say it again for those who, who didn't catch it. You have people now who just want a pastor. They don't want the prophet because they don't want to know the will of God for their life. <laughs> Come on, because you have many people that are running away from their calling and they're running away from their assignment. But when the prophet comes, hallelujah, many times the prophet comes with the word of the Lord to tell that person, this is the will of God for your life. It ain't a Mercedes. It ain't a new house. Oh, y'all not ready. <laughs> it ain't some more money in your bank account. Come on, those three right there. That's what all these false prophets hit. And so many people get excited over those words. But the truth of the matter is, if you pay your tithes and give your offering, he'll give you all three. <laughs> Listen, hallelujah, he'll give you the new truck. He'll give you the Mercedes Benz when you are faithful to him. Come on, somebody. Matthew 6 and 33. Hallelujah. But seek ye first, hallelujah, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The Bible says all these things, hallelujah, shall be added unto you. The house, the car, the, the, the husband, the wife, the baby. Listen, you want some new fish. He'll give you some goldfish. I'm just saying. <laughs> all right. So, so you don't need a prophet, amen, to tell you about a bunch of blessings. Because you got to be very careful. Because if you are in sin, you should be able to look that prophet in the face and say, can you go a little bit deeper? I need you to go a little bit deeper because I, I need to come out. I need to come out of Aya by Shay. Come on. I'm talking to the church tonight. Come on. Come on. You, you don't need a prophet Aya by Shay, or a prophetic voice to patty cake your sin. You need the prophet 
to be able to call out your sin, even if they whisper it in your ear. Because that's what's going to draw you back to God. See, prophecy is supposed to draw us back to God. So the purpose of the prophet, y'all not ready. Listen, and, and don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I, this is what I see now in the spirit and in the natural. A lot of prophets want to encourage they got, they got, you know, all these encouraging broadcasts and I want to encourage you and, you know, I, you know, I want to encourage you in the morning. I want to encourage you in the afternoon. I want to encourage you at night. But, but if I, if the prophet is not encouraging the people to live right, then the prophet has missed his or her assignment. God did not call, ah, yes, Lord, I hear you. God did not call the prophet to encourage all the time. Encouragement is great. But let me just say this. God did not call his true prophets. All of this encouragement. Because you got to be very careful with that. Because then what happens is. You, you, your flesh. Huh, Jesus have mercy tonight. Your flesh gets to a place to where. You're like, I'm expecting, um, you know, this encouragement from this pastor. I'm expecting this from this, this man of God, this woman of God, because their ministry is nothing but encouragement. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Listen, the true prophet, <laughs> Jesus have mercy. Listen, that mm, Jesus have mercy. A person does not need to hear encouragement when they are on their way to hell. The only thing that you need to encourage them to do is get right with God. Not encourage them to keep going, keep living, keep striving. I wait. I wait. I wait. This is what we see. You got all these spiritual coaches. No, if you a prophet, stay a prophet. You don't, you don't need to be a spiritual coach. Huh? We got all these terminology because people don't really want to say that they are a prophet. The Bible says, make your calling and election sure. If he called you as his prophet, that's who you are. You can't sugarcoat that to be liked by people. And this is what we had. See, it takes a true prophet to be able to identify another true prophet. Come on. The Bible says you shall know them by the fruit that they bear. Come on. And you shall also know them that labor among you. Teach Holy Ghost. Mm, Jesus. Hallelujah. And some of us as prophets, we have what is called the gift of discernment to the point to where we can discern even a prophet that is on the run. I know I can. I can see a prophet in Walmart. <laughs> they ain't never got to tell me they're a prophet. And I'm like, why are you running from God? You know, you know God has called you as his prophet or his prophetess. Why are you running from him? Why are you running from God? And they'll just look at me and be like, okay, I know who you are. I say, I know who you are too. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, you understand? So so when you are, that's right, hello. When you are a prophet, huh, hallelujah, hallelujah, you can't run from that. Now the pastor, the pastoral ship, you can put that down. You can lay that down at any time. If you get tired as a pastor, oh, you can lay that down. You can close the doors of your church and you can be like, look, I ain't pastoring the sheep. I ain't pastoring the saints. I'm sick and tired of pastoring. You can do that as a pastor. But the prophet, you're going to die a prophet. Hello? Come on. Prophets die as a prophet. There is no, no, you can't, you can't turn that on and off. Now, you can be an obedient prophet and walk in your prophetic calling. Or you can be a prophet that just doesn't want to walk in your calling. Come on, Jonah. But what's going to happen after a while, I want to minister to the prophets. <laughs> what's going to happen after a while, God is going to create a storm in your life. Uh-oh, uh-oh, we're going somewhere, we're going somewhere. Because there's a few Jonas that's on this live. <laughs> Listen, it's a few Jonas, hallelujah, that are going to watch the replay. Ah, glory to God. Listen, 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. God said, go get him. Go get him and rescue him. I hear you, Lord. Hey, hallelujah. Come on. Come on. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming tonight. Hallelujah. To rescue the prophets tonight. Yes. Because you don't want God to create a storm in your life. You know, the Bible said that God told Jonah to arise. He said, get up, Jonah, and go to Nineveh. Mm. And when you get to Nineveh, I need you to cry against the wickedness in Nineveh. And the Bible said that Jonah got up. Oh, he did the first part. But he didn't go where God told him to go. Mm, Jesus, have mercy. Some of you getting ready to be uprooted because God, yes, Lord, I hear you, is getting ready to place you where you need to be now. Come on. Hallelujah. Did you hear me? Hallelujah. For the prophets that are running like Jonah tonight, God is getting ready to uproot you. Hallelujah. And place you where you need to be. Come on. He's going to get you there by any means necessary. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So the Bible said he told Jonah to get up and Jonah got up, prophet is T, but he went to Tarshish. The Bible said he went away from the presence of the Lord. Mm. Prophets, that's dangerous. That's dangerous prophets for you to go away from God's presence. Because if you go away from God's presence, you can no longer hear him. Come on. And this is what led me to the topic to teach tonight, uh, uh, um, Sister uh, Todd. I see you hitting those hearts because that's what God told me. He said, many of my people and my prophets are no longer hearing from me. No longer are they hearing from me. I said, Jesus, have mercy. Hallelujah. There are so many people that are no longer hearing from God. Listen, you're going to get free tonight if you tell the truth. God's going to set you free if you tell the truth. Come on. He's going to set you free once you tell the truth. And you say, you know what, Apostle Carmen, you're right. I haven't been hearing from God. There were seasons in my life where I used to hear from him, but now I don't hear from God. Come on, if that's you, just hit those hearts for Jesus. Come on, I know what he told me. I know what God told me. Because we're in the last and evil days, you need to hear from God. Come on, you don't need to study all of this stuff to the point. I'm saying stuff. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go there exactly what people are doing, but but I'm gonna say this: you have many people that want to study different uh theologies and i get it you got many people that want to go back to school theology school and i get it amen i have many degrees but let me tell you something it wasn't until i came in contact with the holy ghost hallelujah hallelujah listen my degrees didn't matter come on somebody hallelujah all the schooling y'all not ready y'all not ready all the schooling that i had See, we can gain so much knowledge, but if we don't understand that we need the Holy Ghost, <laughs> because listen, you can have all this knowledge stacked up like this, but if you don't have the Holy Spirit to be able to give you the interpretation, ah, hallelujah, hallelujah, of, of what that knowledge is that you have gained and you were taught. Come on. See, this is why a lot of people want to sit under a pastor, but they don't want the prophet in their life. Because see, the prophet, ah, hallelujah, it comes, the prophet comes with revelation. See, you can have a pastor teach you, listen to this, a pastor that doesn't have a prophetic anointing on their life, they're just teaching. But when you have a prophet, who also walks in the office and the mantle of the pastor, that teaching is going to be prophetic. And this is why y'all not ready, but put your seatbelt on. This is why a lot of people, they don't like prophetic ministries. They'll come to a prophetic ministry, but they don't stay because, because the, the heat gets turned up. Come on, because the prophet does what? The prophet, let me, let me read it again, proclaims the will of God for your life. And this is why, listen, prophet is T, they can't get with it. This is why when people join my church, you know what I tell them? I say, listen, I, I get it. You love the anointing. You love the way that God flows and he moves here. I get it. But make sure that God is calling you to PIPW ministry. Don't, don't just join this ministry because you, you, you caught up in the hype. Because when God start rebuking you, 
when he starts exposing your mess, and if you're dealing in dibbing in, wet, in witchcraft, that's going to be exposed. If it's curses in your family, that's going to be exposed because God wants to deliver you. See, mm, what comes with the prophet is also deliverance. Ha, ah, hallelujah. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. What comes with the prophet is also healing. Hiya bashe. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean that the pastor may not have it, but the pastor has to have a prophetic grace on their life. In order to be able, ah, glory to God, to operate in that healing and deliverance that comes from the prophet. See the difference? See the difference? See the difference? So if you have a pastor that is also a prophet, you are extremely blessed. When I tell you extremely blessed, you are extremely blessed. I'm telling you, you listen, because you're going to hear the word of the Lord. You're going to be taught the word. You're going to get a foundation and not just a foundation. Hallelujah. But God's going to help build on that foundation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, so when the enemy comes, come on, Sister Latanya. Hallelujah. The Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood. Mm, hallelujah. The spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. That's the word of God. Hallelujah. That's the power of God. That's the anointing of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then God will teach you how to war and fight against the enemy. But if you're sitting inside of a church, my Lord, to where all you want is a pastor and all you want is just to be taught the word. Hallelujah. But not how to apply the word. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And not even be able to pray the word. Woo, glory to God. See, it takes a prophet to teach you how to pray the word of God. This is why Jesus, yes, Lord, I hear you. This is why Jesus taught the disciples how to pray. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ah, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus taught the disciples how to pray because the time was going to come. Hallelujah. Where they were going to need prophetic prayer. Catch the revelation. Catch the revelation. Catch the revelation. Hallelujah. He said, pray in this manner. Mm. Hallelujah. He said, our father, which art in heaven. Come on. He said, hallowed be thy name. He said, ah, glory to God. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Father, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And Father, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. There's that deliverance in the Our Father's Prayer. Y'all not ready. Hallelujah. You think the Our Father's Prayer is just a patty cake prayer. No, that's a prophetic prayer. Can I teach on tonight? Hey, hallelujah. Can I just teach on tonight? Can I teach, Sister Debbie? Can I just teach on tonight? Hallelujah. The, ah, glory to God. The Our Father's Prayer is a powerful prayer prophetic prayer. And if you don't know what else to pray, hallelujah, pray the Our Father's Prayer. And once you get the revelation, hallelujah, you're going to ask God to deliver you. Hallelujah, you're going to ask God to come on in. Hallelujah, you're going to say, God, hallelujah, help me to forgive. Help me, oh, help me to forgive those who have sinned against me. And God, I need you to forgive me. Hallelujah. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, see, it's so much, it's so much, it's so much, it's so so much is so much in the our father's prayer hey i said it's so much glory to god in the our father's prayer come on we trying to pray everything else hallelujah except the our father's prayer and we have not caught the revelation hallelujah that jesus had to teach the disciples how to pray hallelujah so stop saying you don't need nobody to teach you um how to pray my god yes you do oh hallelujah you need somebody hey which is a prophet in your life to teach you how to pray. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. Hallelujah. I feel the fire of God tonight. Yes, Lord. Somebody need to tell God yes again. Come on. You need to tell God yes again. Yes, Lord. You need to tell God yes again. And when you tell him yes this time, hallelujah. Hey, his Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. is going to touch you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Because now you realize, hallelujah, that you need a prophet. And not just a pastor. Come on. You're going to realize. Woo. 
Woo, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. You're going to realize now, hallelujah, that you need a prophet. And whether your apostle is a prophet, good. Come on, your bishop might be a prophet. That's good. Come on, somebody, which means your life is going to stay in alignment with God. And God's going to reveal his will for your life, which means when the devil comes in, it doesn't matter what he does. Hallelujah. Because I am the prophetic word of the Lord, prophetic prayer is going to keep you in alignment with God. And this is why you got to stay connected to the prophetic voice in your life. But what happens is this, whew, Jesus, what happens is this people of God, the enemy comes in and he'll tell that saint or tell that person, you don't need your prophet. You can pray yourself. You can prophesy yourself. And now here comes divination. Y'all not ready. Hallelujah. And not only does divination come in, Sister Stephanie, Evangelist Stephanie, what happens is the enemy will tell you, you can do it by yourself. You, you, you don't need the prophet. Well, let me, let me encourage you. The apostle and the prophet work hand in hand. Hmm. I, I said, <laughs> hallelujah, the apostle and the prophet work hand in hand. But the Bible also, hallelujah, the Bible also says that God is going to use his holy apostles and his holy prophets in the last days. And we're in the last days right now. Come on. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. This is why the false prophets are getting ready to die off. And I ain't speaking death over nobody. Come on here. Prayerfully, if you're a false prophet and you're listening, you're going to repent. So God don't kill you. Uh, that part. Hey, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Because see, sometimes, we got to be in the midst where the word of God is coming from. Come on, somebody, to be able to repent. And, it, and sometimes it's a voice you've never heard of. Ooh, hallelujah. Sometimes God will lead you to a ministry that you've never heard of. Ah, oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. See, when I got saved for real, for real, I'm talking about for real, for real. When I got healed, delivered, and set free, God placed me under a powerful, anointed woman of God. Come on, somebody. But it took my sister in the Lord, Prophet Terry, hallelujah, to tell me. She said, listen, Prophetess Carmen, you got to see this woman of God. I said, for real? She said, yes. Listen, she said, you got to see this woman of God. You got to come and you got to just, you got to witness this ministry. I said, okay. And I sat on the edge of my bed. I'll never forget. Hi, I shape. I just got finished doing hair. Amen. In, in the salon in my basement. I just got done. Evangelist Arlene. And Prophet Terry, my girlfriend, she called me. I don't know why God got me sharing this. Hi, I shape. Hallelujah. And Prophet Terry called me. And I answered the phone. And she was like, my sister. She was like, you have to go. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta experience this ministry. And I said, okay. I said, what times are the service? She gave me Sunday. I said, okay. I said, what other time? She said, Friday night. So you know what? I'm going to be there Friday night. And I sat on the edge of my bed, Evangelist Arlene, and I closed my eyes. High up I shake. And when I closed my eyes, glory to God, the Lord showed me the great woman of God. He showed me her. And at the prophet here, we got finished talking about the church and how God was moving. I asked her, I said, I said, do the woman of God look like this? I said, does, does she, does this what she do? I, I see her, you know, praying for the people and I, I see this and I see that. And I described the whole entire service. Ha, ah, glory to God. And what the great woman of God looked like. She said, yes, prophetess Carmen. She said, how you know? I said, God just showed me. Ha, ah, hallelujah. There are times. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Because see, some of you have been seeing some things, but now it's time for you to really see it. Hey, glory to God. Some of you have been having prophetic dreams. I hear the Lord say, and that's why I had to share that on tonight, because you got to follow. Mm, hallelujah. Where the spirit of the Lord is leading you. Oh, he's going to show you before he show you. Hey, I said, he's going to show you. Before he shows you. Come on, somebody. I said, God is going to show you before he shows you. Come on, there's going to be a confirmation in your spirit that where God is taking you. Hallelujah. And the prophet, the leader that he wants to sit you under. Oh, my God. He's going to reveal to you this is where you need to be. It's going to confirm and bear witness with your spirit. Come on. And the devil is not going to be able to move you. Hey, out of position. Woo, yes, God, I hear you. So many people get moved out of position because they're not staying focused on what God said. Come on. And the same people that say, this is what the, this is what the church say. You know, that some people in the church that say this, God sent me here. But then three months later, they ready to go. 
but you say God sent you here. <laughs> you say God gave you a dream. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You say, oh, y'all not ready. <laughs> That's what they do because the heat got turned up. Come on, somebody. And when the heat gets turned up, all you got to do is just know that Jesus is in the fire with you. Hey, come on, somebody. When the heat gets turned up and the fire of God, hallelujah, is exposing those impurities in your life. What that means is all he's doing is taking, amen, you, hallelujah, from that piece of coal. And he's going to make you that diamond. Come on, somebody. See, the fire, the fire of God, it comes to do a few things. Can I teach tonight? Can I just teach tonight? Can I just teach on tonight? Hallelujah. The fire of God, it comes to do a few things. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And when you look at the diamond, mm, glory to God. See, a diamond, Sister Debbie, it looks beautiful in the end. But in the beginning, hallelujah, it's a piece of coal. It's a lump of coal. It don't look too good. Come on, somebody. It doesn't look nothing like the finished product, my Lord. Hallelujah. And that's us when we come to God. Oh, y'all not ready tonight. That's you when you come to church. Come on, somebody. When you decide to join a ministry, my God, you are that lump of clay hallelujah that cold hallelujah that don't look too good and that's when god say i gotta put some fire on you now i, I got to mm. I got to take out the impurities. Come on. I got to put you in the furnace for a little bit. Come on, Sister Katrina. Hallelujah. And this is why it don't feel too good. Can I just talk, amen, from the perspective of the prophet? Come on, somebody. And many people, hallelujah, love when the prophet is prophesying good things. But when the prophet is telling you, you got to get out of that man's bed. You got to get out of that woman's bed. Y'all not ready. You got to cut off that relationship. Come on, somebody. How That person ain't your husband and that person ain't your wife. Oh my God. You may say I've been with them for 10 years and God say, so what? Oh yes, Lord. And that's the time when you got the eye of our shape. You got to make a decision. And who you going to serve? You got to make a decision. Huh? Woo. Yes, God, you, you got to make, ah, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the fire of God on this broadcast. You got to make a decision. Hmm. Hey, hey, my shape. That's when Jesus said, ah, yes, God. He said, choose ye this day who you going to serve. Choose who you going to serve. You going to serve God or you going to serve mammon, which means money. Come on, you, you going to serve God or you going to serve the devil? Come on, I, it, it, there is no in between. Come on. He, he said, if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Hey, hallelujah, which means if you, you're going to be on fire for God or you're going to be cold, there, there, there is no in between. Come on, somebody. So the lukewarm Christians or lukewarm believers, God is saying tonight, huh? hallelujah, you got to choose who you're going to serve. Come on, are you going to stay in a place where you just got a pastor that's passive? Y'all not ready. I come to kill some demons tonight. Hey, are you going to stay in a place where the pastor is just passive? They ain't telling you about your sin. They, they're not telling you to come out from among them and be separated. Come on. They, they're patty, patty cake in your flesh. They're patty cake in the word. The word is sugar coated. You know how many people love that? They love to go to churches where it's one, two, three, shout, and then they out the door. Come on. They, they, they love churches where, you know, all they do is preach Jesus. We got that part. But you've been saved for 10 years. You need something else. <laughs> Come on, prophet. See, you, 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 listen, the people of God need something else. But you know what people say? Apostle, you know, I, I hear you, but, you know, I can't really follow you. You can't follow me because you ain't got the Holy Ghost. But those that got the... You, you, you can't follow... <laughs> I get it all the time. People follow the ministry until the enemy comes in. Then the enemy comes in and they like, you don't need that. You, you need to sit under somebody, you know, that could walk you through these steps. God done already took you through five steps already. He done took you through the five step program in the spirit. He done healed you and delivered you and set you free. But what happens, ah, glory to God. What happens, Sister Latanya, is they want to go back to complacency. Speak Holy Ghost. People want to go back to a place where they're comfortable. I just want to go to church and I don't even want to be there but an hour and a half. I'm tired of all this three hours of church. 
Well, it's somebody that wish they had three hours of church. Hey, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Ah, glory to God. Y'all not ready. Come on, somebody. It's somebody sitting somewhere in a dead church that wish they was in an alive church. But you got those that are in an alive church where the spirit of God is moving and they don't even want to be there. They're like, I ain't going back to that. I don't take all that. And yada, yada, yada. Till their kids get sick. Hi, Come on, somebody. Until, until an affliction hits their body. Then all of a sudden they show up at church. You ain't apologize. You ain't repent. <laughs> but you just got your hands lifted because you think Jesus is supposed to just touch you. Come on. You, you just think the Lord is supposed to just, oh, he's he supposed to just use the prophet to come off their podium or off their seat and, and come see about you. After you done slapped God in the face. He done healed your body. <laughs> come on, somebody. How, oh, you did it, the old child. You know they do that, Sister Katrina. Come on, God done healed their body. And, and now all of a sudden, they, I don't need them no more. Or better yet, they think they have arrived. How about that one? That's another thing. That's another thing that's happening in the body of Christ. They think they the prophet too. Oh, it's a prophetic calling on my life too. I can preach just like apostle. I can preach just like prophetess. I can, I can minister too. The devil is a liar. <laughs> so many people don't know if they coming or going. Come on, you stable one week and then you unstable the next. Get out of here. Loose here. Loose here. You need God. Hallelujah. You need the power of God. And most of all, listen to this. You have to be birthed out. Come on. If you are prophetic voice, you have to be birthed out. Come on, somebody. You need a spiritual midwife that can birth. Oh, y'all not ready for this type of teaching. Y'all not ready for this. Because see, I had to be birthed out. Even though I was highly anointed and highly gifted. We got that part. Amen. I had to be healed, I had to be delivered, and I had to be birthed out. Come on. I am a product. When I tell you all I am a product of my former leader. I am a product. Come on. Come on. Before I am a before God releases you. Because see, so many people prematurely go ahead and start their own ministry. That's a pitfall waiting, waiting. Listen, it's waiting for you to fall in it. I can tell you that right now. Don't you go and just start your ministry. Oh, I'm going to get on Facebook live and I'm going to encourage the people. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to tell so-and-so I'm ready to preach. I'm going to get engagements. No, 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 no. It don't work like that. <laughs> God said he'll make, <laughs> he said your gift will make room for you. <laughs> I'm, I'm in all I'm in somebody's business right now. Somebody mad at me, but it's okay. I'm telling all your business tonight, but it's the Holy Ghost because I don't know, but God does. And he wants to set you free from that. Come on, that, that's danger waiting to happen. Ask me how I know. You need permission. See, nobody wants to submit anymore, even as a prophet. I know. I ain't no hearts. Ain't no hearts jumping off now. Ain't no hallelujahs and no glory to God. <laughs> Because listen, people don't want to sit and be still to be groomed. Nobody wants to sit anymore. Everybody is just peer on. I got to do this. I got to do that. See, I'm glad I came from an era where if you weren't right, they set you down. I'm so grateful my leader sat me down when I wasn't right. Carmen, you, mm -mm, you need a little bit more. You ain't ready. Okay. All right, Pastor. I trust you. God sent me here. But now, this is a generation. Mm -mm. Can nobody tell me what to do? I, I already came anointed. Okay, if you came anointed, then why did he send you? You might be gifted. There's a difference. Holler, there, there is a difference. Can somebody put in the comments, there is a difference. Can, can somebody put in the comments, there is a difference. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. Can you put in the comments? There is a difference. I'm, I'm going to give you scripture. Come on. There is a difference. The Bible says gifts and callings are without repentance. Which means you could be a fornicator, an adulterer. You, you could have just came out of five people's beds. Listen, and still prophesy. This is why. Hey, Oh, God. You got to make sure the voice that's pouring into you is authentic. And it's coming straight from God. Because the devil knows the word too. 
Come on. Satan know the word. <laughs> y'all don't y'all didn't know that? Come on. And he comes as an angel of light. You didn't know that? That's why you gotta be very careful. Come on. You have to have discernment. And if you have a prophet in your life, listen to that one voice in your life, and that's it. See, this is sound doctrine. This is what you call true holiness. Come on. But we're in a time now because of social media, you can just scroll up and down and hear every prophet that's on your timeline. Whether they speaking the truth or not, you, you can just get the scrolling. And, and look, as soon as they see your name, they like, oh, Sister Latanya Cooper, the Lord told me, and I'm just giving your name. The Lord told me to tell you he about to give you another house. Oh, I see God filling up your bank account. And I see this and I see that. And you got to be able to sit there and look at that screen and be like, first of all, I didn't even ask you for a word. Number one. And number two, you off. I just got this house. What you mean God get ready to give me another house? My bank account is already full because I work. Hold on. Everybody ain't broke in the kingdom. See, I'm about to kill some demons tonight. Let me tell you something. Everybody ain't broke in the kingdom. Oh, I'm getting in good trouble. <laughs> Come on here. Why do prophets always say, oh, in seven days, I see a financial miracle. Seven days, I'm going to get my paycheck because I worked. Oh. Somebody put in the comments that part. <laughs> Listen. They tell me something in seven days, in 14 days, right? Because I work two weeks and I get paid in two weeks. Yeah, you, you hit that right. Yeah, in, in, in 14 days, yep, that's my two-week paycheck. You right. Unexpected money going to hit. No, that ain't unexpected because I punched the clock. You wrong. <laughs> See? Hey, you got to be able to hear. You got to be able to discern. You know, the Bible says, try the spirit by the spirit to see if that spirit is of God. I'm telling the truth, right? Sister Katrina, come on. They, they do it all the time. And when they try to do it to me, I just sit there and be like, okay, you got to go deeper. I'm sorry. Uh, listen, you, you got you to go a little bit deeper with that one. And don't be single. And they know you single. Oh, I see a husband. And then for the men, I see a wife. Okay, go a little bit deeper. What else you see? Because there's chances that I just may get married. We, we got that part. <laughs> what, what, what else do you see? Come on. If God, I am by shape. If he's showing you. See, we're talking about the prophet now. If he's showing you. I'm getting in good trouble. Y'all got me? Listen. If he's showing you that I'm getting ready to get married, go a little bit deeper. Can, can you go a little bit deeper? Oh, you can't go deeper because you know I'm single and you think that's going to move my emotions. What if I don't want nobody? What if I'm content <laughs> in the place that I'm in? I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, hi, my shape. What if God told me, oh, you're going to get engaged at the end of this year and you're going to get married in 2024? What if God told me that? But then the prophet comes and says, oh, I see you get married this year. I'm going to tell the prophet, you a lying wonder. Because God told me engagement this year and then marriage next year. <laughs> Hallelujah. You got to be very careful when you're talking to a prophet. That's why I tell people, when you get on my phone, please don't go lying. Please don't start lying. Because God is going to reveal to me that you're lying. Come on. Don't, 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 no, we don't, we don't do lies. You're going to do the truth. So that you can get free. <laughs> Come on, you, you, ah, Shatan Nabaha. You can't lie to a true prophet. Hello? That's why I tell people, stop lying. And then when I say their feelings get hurt, now they wanna start crying. What you crying for on the phone? Because God exposed the fact that you're lying. But why are you lying to me? The fact that you're, yes, Lord, I hear you. He said, go deep. The fact that you're lying to the prophet is because you don't realize that they're a true prophet. Because if you knew that they were true prophet, hallelujah, before you got on the phone, you would know to tell the truth. Come on. You would know to tell the truth. <laughs> hallelujah. But, but most people don't believe that God, the spirit of the Lord is resting in their belly. Come on. 
Come on, a true prophet, hallelujah, the spirit of God, hallelujah, rest in, in the pit of our belly. And the more obedient you are to God, the more he will trust you with his people. I just said something right there. He'll trust you with prophecy. Come on, he'll speak to you, glory to God, on behalf of his people. He will tell you what thus saith the Lord, hallelujah, to draw the people back to him. Come on. But when you are in a disobedient prophet, you start saying things like, I see a 24 hour turnaround. And I'm not saying God ain't going to turn it around in 24 hours, but what is he going to turn around? You might have three things going on in your life. But the prophet comes and say, I see a 24 hour turnaround. Turn around for what? What, what exactly is God giving? What, what are you about to turn around? Because I got five situations going on right now. Which one? Which one? <laughs> see, ah, shakaya, namasake. Hallelujah. Let, let me just explain this to you all. Don't be deceived. The Bible says, mm, yes, God, I hear you. The Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Catch that. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Mm, catch that. I'm, I'm going to say it till it hits your spirit. Be not deceived. God is not mocked, people of God. Come on. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Come on. Somebody may say, Apostle, why are you saying that? It all ties in. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. So those who say God said and God didn't say, they're mocking God. Ooh. All right. <laughs> so you need a true prophet in your life. One that's not mocking God, but one who is speaking the word of the Lord concerning your life. And you will know. Amen. Somebody put in the comments. You will know. Amen. When you have come into the presence of a true prophet, you will know without a shadow of a doubt. You ain't got to question it. You ain't got to, you know, consult God because God will be speaking to you in such a way when you come into the presence of a true prophet, you will say only God. You will say only God knew that. God, you're the only one that knew that. So, so because, ah, hallelujah, you put that in your, in your vessel into your prophet, God, I believe, I believe. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, Shatan Baha. Hallelujah. I believe. Glory to God. Mm. Ah, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I hear you. Hallelujah. You begin to say, I believe. Hiya Bashe. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because when you believe the prophet, the Bible says, So shall ye prosper. Believe in my prophet, so shall ye prosper. Come on. Hallelujah. Ah, yes, Lord. I hear you. That's how prosperity comes. When you believe. Prosperity don't come just because somebody says it. Selah, we're going to pause and think about that for a minute. So the next time somebody tell you you're going to be a millionaire, make sure that you're faithful over what God has already given you. Because you're not going to be a millionaire if you can't be faithful over $100. God give you 100 and he tell you to give a tithe out of that. You can't give $10 out of 100 Come on. Amen. Amen, Sister Latanya. Amen. God give you a thousand dollars. You can't you can't give a hundred out of the thousand. So so how is he gonna make you a millionaire? You gotta make sure, people of God, that when people are speaking over your life, that you understand whether it's God or whether it's not. Because really what that prophet should be saying to you is that God is saying he wants you to be a good steward over what he has given you. That's the first part. He, he's not going to tell you that you're going to be a millionaire. And here it is. You, you can't, you robbing Peter to pay Paul. And it's been like that for years. So a true prophet, ah, yes, Lord, I hear you, will come and break that curse off of you. Because the true prophet can see, ah, hallelujah, that your finances is messed up because you don't know how to be a good steward. Come on, that prophet, God will reveal to the true prophet exactly what's going on to get to the root, huh? glory to God, of the problem. See, that's what true prophets, that's what we do. 
God uses us to get to the root of the problem to set you free. Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. That's the purpose. Thank you, Holy Ghost, of a true prophet in your life. Hey, hallelujah, to be able to help you. Hallelujah, to walk in the will of God. That's the purpose of the prophet. Ah, hallelujah. Mm. Glory to God. Hallelujah, to draw you back to God so that you can now walk in the will of God for your life. And what he has spoken over your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you have roots, hallelujah, that need to be uprooted, don't get mad when a prophet calls it out. Hey, come on. When there are roots in your life, bitterness, stubbornness, anger, resentment, come on, rejection. My God, hallelujah. And the prophet begins, hallelujah, to, to call those things out. And uproot those things. Come on, somebody. Don't get mad at the prophet. Hallelujah. But just lift your hands and tell God, thank you. Because I promise you, before he gives you the house to call, the baby, the wedding, and all of that stuff. He wants you to be healed, delivered, and set free. Because anything that God does is perfect. Come on. Come, somebody write that in the comments. Everything that God does for us is perfect. But when we do it on our own, it's not perfect. See, see when God does it, huh? hallelujah, it's perfect. Come on, you will find yourself. Come on, Sister Katrina. Because God, ah, yes, Lord, he has delivered you from so many things. She said, now I can see. Hey, she said, now I can run on. Hallelujah. And see what the end shall be. Come on, somebody. But God, hallelujah, had to uproot some stuff so that she could see. Because cause how, mm, yes, Lord, I hear you. How is a prophet or a false prophet, somebody telling you that, that God is getting ready to bless your future or you're going to walk in purpose and destiny and here you can't even see. Hey. Hallelujah. The, the job of the prophet is to tell you, oh, glory to God, that God is getting ready to open your eyesight. Hey, so that, oh, when you begin to walk, hallelujah, you begin to see where God is taking you. Mm. This is why I do prophetic mentorship. Amen. God has called me to, amen, teach the prophets. Hallelujah. Not teach them how to prophesy. I can't teach you how to prophesy. Amen. Because every prophet is different. So, so prophetic school or prophetic mentorship is not to teach one how to prophesy. You got people that say that, but no, you need prophetic school. Amen. I went to, I went to Eagle's Nest. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The school of the prophets. Amen. Hallelujah. And to sit in a room, amen, with, with people like myself. Come on, they had prophetic dreams and visions. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I felt, higher by shape, hallelujah, that I was not alone. Because many prophets, we feel alone. In other words, we realize we're different. We realize that we are peculiar. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The prophet, higher by shape, learns to walk close with God. So we're different. We're, we're very, very different. Come on. Hallelujah. Hey, Shatanda Baha. Hallelujah. Prophets are very, very different. This is why God said, touch not mine anointed and do my prophet no harm. Hallelujah. The Bible doesn't say touch not my teacher and do my prophet no harm. It doesn't say touch not my apostle and do my, ah, come on somebody. Do, touch not my anointed and do my apostle no harm. It doesn't say touch not my anointed and do my, 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 um, evangelist no harm. God is very concerned about his prophet. Come on. Come on. He's very, ah, shake you're not Yes, God, I hear you. He's very concerned. That's why you don't put your mouth on a prophet. Hey, hi, you by shake. You don't put your mouth on a prophet. If you don't understand something, go to God. Go to God. He'll tell you. He'll show you. Mm -hmm, he'll show you. He might have to put you to sleep to show you, but he'll, he'll show you. <laughs> he, he might have to give you a good old dream. And you say, oh, I get it now. He is a prophet. She is a prophet. Okay, I understand. I understand that I can't put my mouth on them. Hey, hallelujah. And what I don't understand, I need to go to God concerning it. So that what the prophet has spoken can manifest in my life. See that? See that? So, so, so your blessing is in the mouth of the prophet. Come on. When a lot of people think that they need a pastor, but the truth of the matter is the pastor teaches you the word of God, teaches you how to live. But the prophet, hallelujah, speaks the will of God concerning your life. There's a difference. Y'all got it? Y'all got it? 
And once again, you have people that only want a pastor because they don't want to live right. <laughs> Listen, you, you got people, they like, mm -mm, Apostle, this ministry is too much. I can't take it. Let me go to the church down the street because all I need to do is bring my Bible and my notepad and write a little stuff down. I ain't got to worry about getting delivered. I ain't got to worry. Y'all not ready. I ain't got to worry about getting healed. I could just live a saved life and wait for the return of Jesus. I ain't got to answer my calling. I don't want to do all that. I just want to go to a church where I could just sit and be comfortable. Because somebody write in the comments, those days are over. I shared on the prayer line last night that God is calling his people to kingdom assignments. God, <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble again. Good trouble. God is calling his people to their kingdom assignment. Do you know if you die and leave this earth without completing your kingdom assignment, you won't get your crown that God has for you? Do you understand? <laughs> Come on, somebody. This is why many of you need to be placed in a ministry that is prophetic. Because when you are prophetic, I just was talking to my spiritual daughter about this the other day. If you are prophetic and you are in a house that's not prophetic, your spirit is not going to ever be at ease. Your spirit is going to be vexed all the time. Come on. Hallelujah. Because the prophetic, it is stared up. Come on. Hallelujah. The Bible speaks about it. Amen. And God, he stares up the gift. Come on. Hallelujah. Ah, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. He stares up the prophetic that's inside of you when you are connected to the prophetic anointing. So this is why when you step foot in, ah, yes, Lord. When you step foot in a prophetic house. And the spirit of prophecy is in you. Glory to God. Even in the Bible times. Hallelujah. Where the spirit of prophecy was, Sister Debbie. They all were able to prophesy. Why? Because the spirit of prophecy was there. Come on. Where the spirit of prophecy is. Hallelujah. You tap into it. You can prophesy too. You didn't know that? Come on. Hallelujah. And after a while, everybody be prophesying to everybody. Come on, it's a good thing. Come on, somebody. It's a good thing because it edifies. Come on, it edifies what? The body of Christ. Let's turn to the word. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. It says that he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Yes, Lord, I hear you. It says, verse 13, mm -hmm, until we all come into the unity of the faith uh huh, and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, uh huh, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's the purpose of the fivefold ministry. That's the purpose of the fivefold ministry. Let me read it again. The Bible says, and he gave some. Can somebody put in the comments some? Because all are not called by God. Okay. And he gave some apostles and some prophets. Come on. And some evangelists. Come on. And some pastors. Right. Come on. And teachers for what? For the perfecting of the saints. For the work. Hmm. Of the ministry. Mm -hmm. That's why he called you. That's why God called you. For the work of ministry. Come on. For the edifying. That's the lifting up. <laughs> Come on. That's why if you go to church and it's real good. Your spirit should be lifted up. Ah, Hallelujah. You should feel like you can fly. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. Fly over your enemies. Right. Come on. It's for the edifying of the body of Christ. That's the purpose. Amen. So God knew what he was doing before the foundation of the world. He didn't need our permission. He just needs our obedience. Come on. God doesn't need his. Listen, he doesn't need our permission to do anything. This was already the foundation before you and I got here. It's just what you have to do now. Hmm. 
is get in position to where God wants you to be. But it's important where you fellowship. It's important where you labor. Come on. It is very important. Yes. Come on. For those of you that feel like you don't need church. For those of you that feel like you can miss Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. Then you come on in like ain't nothing ever happened. That's not good. Mm -mm. God said in his word. He said do not forsake the assembling of the saints. Don't forsake gathering together. Come on. Amen, Sister Nat. Mm -hmm. Don't forsake. In other words, huh? glory to God. Always stay in connection. Stay in tune. This is why we go live on Facebook. Some people say, Apostle, why you go live and deliverance is breaking out in your church and healing is taking place? I said, I go live so that the saints can see and partake of the word and partake of the move of God. That's why we go live. Come on. Jesus even said in his word, what did he say? He said, before he returns, the, the gospel will be preached in the four corners of the earth, all over, north, south, east, and west. Y'all see this thing behind me? Y'all see that compass, right? Can y'all see that compass here on Facebook? Y'all see that compass here? Y'all see this compass behind me? Come on. Y'all see that, right? You got the north, you got south, you got east, and you got the west. Y'all see this behind me, right? Can, can y'all see this? Come on. I want you to take a look. It's so prophetic. Ah, hallelujah. Five of y'all going to catch it. C can you see this on Instagram? You see it? North, south, east, and west. Some people can't see it because if I sit right here, you, you can't really see what's behind me. Right? You see it? You see it, Yvonne? It's so prophetic. Hallelujah. See that? I'm going to turn, turn YouTube. Y'all see that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a purpose for that. God told me, he said, every time you go live, daughter, ah, hallelujah. He said, my word is going out to the four corners of the earth. So when I seen it in the furniture store, I said, I told the guy, I said, can you give me that off the wall? He said, that's not for sale. I said, why not? <laughs> he said, you know what? For you, I'll give it to you. I said, yeah, I need that. I said, I need that. God told me, he said, he said, I need that. I said, how much you going to charge me? He ain't charged me much for it. And I brought it. Amen. It's almost two years ago. Hallelujah. But when God has called you, glory to God, he said, make your calling and election sure. And not only that, I know that this ministry is international. So I'm not focused just on this region. Come on. He called me to this region to save his people. I know what he called me for. Somebody may say, Jesus saves. Jesus uses people. Okay. Y'all got to come out of that. Come on, somebody. Because Jesus is not going to knock on the door. He not, listen, he ain't stepping foot in no church. His spirit is going to come. But his physical body, he's, ah, shake, y'all not my shake. His physical body ain't coming. Catch that revelation. God uses people. Some of y'all got to come out of that false doctrine. That's false doctrine. You got so many people talking about Jesus, 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 Jesus. Okay, after you finish calling on him, did his spirit show up? If he did not show up, you need to go where his spirit is. Catch the revelation. This is why we have dead churches and dead ministries. And we got people, listen, listen, they'll study the names of God, but they don't have his spirit. Listen, you can know Greek, Hebrew, you can know Latin, you can know all of this stuff. <laughs> But if you ah, if you, ah, you're about shape, you ain't got the Holy Ghost, you in trouble. You can tell people you got to learn this and you got to learn that. And then, you know, you got to go to this and you got to go. No, 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 no. You need the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and most of the time it comes through impartation. Hey, hallelujah. By the laying on of hands. Read your Bible. Come on, you, you, yeah, 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 y'all didn't know that? Come on, the impartation of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, can also come through the laying on of hands. See that? People don't want to, they know that part, but they don't want to believe it. Ah, hallelujah, come on somebody. Come on here. 
Some of y'all say, yeah, mm -hmm. I need hands laid on me. Come on. If they anointed, ha, shake, namasake, hallelujah. If they anointed, yeah, some of y'all say, yeah, mm -hmm. I need hands laid on me. Come on. It's called impartation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on. It's called impartation. Come on. It's called impartation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have many churches now and many pastors that don't even have an altar call. They, they don't even have a prayer line anymore. They, oh, y'all not ready. Y'all not ready. I'm killing some demons tonight. Listen, listen. Hallelujah. Stop, stop going to a dead church where they, they ain't even praying for you. Ain't nobody anointed. Y'all. Some of y'all say, I want more. Some of y'all say, I, I need more. Yeah, I want more. I need more. Come on. And when you want more and you need more, God's going to place you higher by shape in a place to get more. Come on. You, you got a desire. Hallelujah. You, you got a desire. Hallelujah. The Lord. You, you got a desire more of him. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hey, the Bible says it's not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. Come on. It's by his spirit, hallelujah, that he's going to heal you. It's by his spirit that he's going to deliver you. It's by his spirit that you shall receive an impartation. You ain't going to receive an impartation being in your flesh. We don't receive impartations in our flesh. That's why God, hey, he got to kill our flesh in order to receive his spirit. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the fire of God moving even now, burning up some things, hallelujah, that need to be burned up. And sometimes there's false doctrine. Sometimes there's false teaching. Come on, somebody. And God got to come. And he got to come and burn it up. Woo, so you can get to really know him in the pardon of your sins. So that you can really know him, hallelujah, by way of his spirit. And not just by what people say. It, it, it grieves my heart. Hallelujah. When I talk to some people and they really don't know God. But they've been in church for five years. They've been in church for ten years. And it, it just grieves my spirit. And I'm like, you know, how are you about shape? How did you sit there so long? And they'll say, Apostle, well, you know, it, it was my family church. Or, you know, it was just a church that I got saved at. And. You know, I, I just decided to stay there and be committed. Well, you want to die spiritually? Because that's what's happening. You want to die spiritually when God is, hey, hi, Yabashay. He's calling you unto the deep. You want to die spiritually? Hallelujah. You, you want to die spiritually? I know you don't want to die spiritually. So come out from among them and be ye separated, saith the Lord. Come out. From among them. Ah, glory to God. And be ye separated, saith the Lord. Can somebody post the four ways to sow at, on the screen so I can pin it at the bottom? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Hallelujah. I want to tell you all, amen, also about the prophet. Amen. The prophet is a seer. The prophet is one who is gifted with more than ordinary spiritual and moral insight. I'm going to say that one more time. The prophet is a seer also. Okay, we have the gift to see. And I'm not talking about with the natural eyes. We have the gift to see in the spirit. All right. A prophet is one who is gifted with more than ordinary spiritual and moral insight this is why when the prophet comes the prophet comes with revelation that you knew not of right Lakia? come on the, the prophet hallelujah you might have known something on the surface but here the prophet comes and goes a little bit deeper and you say oh i get it now the bible also says that surely the lord god will do nothing Unless he reveal his secrets to his servants, the prophets. God reveals his secrets to us. Hmm. I hear you, Holy Ghost. 
Come on. He reveals his secrets to us because he can trust us. This is why if you have a prophet in your life, you are to honor the prophet that's in your life. It doesn't mean that you worship them. It doesn't mean that you idolize them. No, 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 no. Because when you go to God in prayer, he'll send the prophet. Come on, Hezekiah. <laughs> he'll send the prophet to release the word to you that you need to hear for the will of God concerning you. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. So, so when you give it to God, hallelujah, he'll give it to the prophet. Come on. Come on. Catch the revelation. Hallelujah. When you give it to God, mm, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. He'll give it to his prophet to give to you. Huh? Hallelujah. Catch the revelation, people of God. Come on. You got to catch it. You, you got to catch this thing. You know, it's just sad. Yes, Lord, I hear you. It's just sad how so many people dishonor the prophets. You know, I even had a person tell me there are no more prophets. I said, okay. <laughs> they said all the prophets had died off. You know, it's some religions that believe that. Amen. The Jehovah Witnesses believe that. Amen. And my family are Jehovah Witnesses. <laughs> but the amazing thing is when I speak thus say of the Lord, they can't deny it. So I'm like, oh, you said there's no more prophets. <laughs> Come on. They like, well, how you know that? Well, because there are, hey, shatan nabaha. I got to give God praise on this one. I'm sorry. I got to lift my hands to Jesus on this one. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. Because God, hallelujah, will always get the glory. Hallelujah. Out of your life when you are a true prophet, he'll put you in places you don't even want to be in to speak his word. Come on, he'll put you around people you don't even want to talk to. Hey, hallelujah, glory to God to speak his word. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about when you are a true prophet. Hallelujah. He'll make himself known to your family <laughs> when your family don't even believe him. Hey, glory to God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I tell you all the time, my testimony, God handpicked me out of my family. I already know it. I already knew it. <laughs> And some of them are just getting the revelation. Come on. I know who I am. Ha! Ah, glory to God. And I know whose I am. <laughs> come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because when my back was up against the wall, come on here. Hallelujah. When I was facing jail time for something I did not do. Come on here. I knew, glory to God, that God, hallelujah, was going to keep the prison doors closed. Come on, somebody. And he was not going to allow the enemy to make me an example. And he fought for me in the courtroom. Hey, hallelujah, without me saying a word. Glory to God, come on here. So I know him to be a lawyer, Sister Ty, in the courtroom. Hey, I didn't have a lawyer. How you about shape? But when you are God's vessel, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, I feel God moving right here. When you are his child, Hey, you are his prophet. He will fight for you. Let me tell you something. Hallelujah, and those that are watching your life, they got to look and see the miracle. They, they got to look and see. Oh, you, 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 you got out of that? My family would say to me, how, how you get out of that one? Come on here. I say, God did it. Whew, how you about shake? Come on, somebody. God did it. God did it. He going to keep on doing it too. <laughs> Come on here. Sometimes you got to brag on your God. Hey, hallelujah. <laughs> Come on. Sometimes, whoo, I feel God moving right here. Somebody, you need to brag on God now. Listen, that don't mean you overly confident. You're confident in your God because you realize, hey, hallelujah, if he did it before, he'll do it again. Mm. You realize, glory to God, if he did it one time, hey, he'll do it another time. Come on, somebody. Hey, hallelujah, if he did it before, he'll do it again and again and again and again. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He healed your body. Hey, he kept your mind. Come on, somebody. He's more than able to do it again. Glory to God. Whoo, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. Listen, be encouraged tonight. Amen. With this teaching, people of God, be encouraged. Amen. And know there's a difference between the pastor and the prophet. Glory to God. But in these last and evil days, you need a prophet in your life. You can't just make it. 
with the pastor unless the pastor is a prophet. Come on, Holy Ghost. Hey, hallelujah. My belly is still filled up, y'all. Hallelujah. But I know that God is glorified. Hey, hallelujah. My belly is still filled up, but I know that God is glorified because when he gave it to me, I said, Lord, your people should know. He said, they don't know. He said, they don't know. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But the Bible says you shall know the times and the seasons. Woo, I feel like shouting right here. Hallelujah. And the way that you know the times and the seasons is through the prophets of the Lord. Come on. Hallelujah. Our assignment is to tell you what's really going on. Come on. Our assignment. Hallelujah. Is to tell you what's really going on in the earth from your pastor can't do that. Come on, somebody. I said your pastor, unless they are a prophet, your pastor can't do that. They just got a lesson for you. It's Bible study. We're going to teach on faith. Come on. Now we're going to teach on love. I ain't knocking it. I'm just saying. Now we're going to teach on salvation. You already know that. And if you don't know it, that's good. But you need to know, hallelujah, what's taking place in the spirit realm. Come on, hallelujah. Hey, Shatan Nabaha. You need to know how to pray in the spirit. Come on, to get the devil off your back. You need to know what to do when the enemy is fighting your kids. Come on. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And we're in the time now. Can somebody put warfare in on the screen for me? Can you type in the comments? Warfare. Come on. This is a time of spiritual warfare. Hey, we just came out of our women's conference, Armed and Dangerous. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hey, Shatan Nabaha. Come on. Some of you are in spiritual warfare. And you need to know how to pray in the realm of the spirit now. See, all of that prayer of... Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, I just need you to touch me on today, God. I need you to just do what you do best, God. I need you to, you know, cover me when I walk out the door and go to work, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. No. <laughs> no, 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 not, not, not right now. Mm -mm, no, 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 no. The devil gonna sit back and just laugh at you. He gonna be like, oh, okay. They ain't even bind up my works before they left the house. Because they don't know how to bind up my works. Come on. They, they don't die up. I said it on the prayer line last night. Amen. God told us, Sister Katrina. He said, this is the time to bind and loose. Hey, Shatan Nabaha. Come on, somebody. This is the time to bind and to loose. But if you don't know how to bind up the works of the enemy and loose the fire of God. You can't counteract the attack of Satan. Come on. So you have to be taught how to pray. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I feel strengthened tonight. Thank you, Apostle. You're welcome. <laughs> Come on. I just heard that in the spirit. Somebody say, I needed this. You're welcome. Come on. And now you can plant your seed to seal the word. Come on. See, this is the opportunity. Amen. For you to plant your seed and seal this teaching tonight. Come on. This is the time. This is the time. Come on. You want this teaching to manifest in your life. You don't want to just hear a good teaching. You don't want to just hear a good word anymore. That's another thing. Those times are over. Come on. Th th those times are over. You just sitting in church and, and it's just a good word. No, 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 no. Those times are over. The Bible says don't just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer also. I told the prayer line last night. It's time for manifestation. Come on, hallelujah, but you got to use application. Hey, glory to God. Let me let me give you the revelation. And when I said it last night on the prayer line, some of them, they couldn't get with it, but it's all right. Let me give it to y'all tonight. <laughs> hallelujah, as you all prepare your seed to give. Listen, hallelujah, the information is that should be at the bottom of the screen. Evangelist Arlene, I see you on tonight. Can you post the four ways to sow so that I can pin it right there? Those of you that are part of PIPW ministry, you already know how to sow. The Cash App, the PayPal, the Zale, um, the ministry website, you all know it. Amen. Just go ahead and start sowing. Amen. Sow into the word tonight. Amen. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I told the prayer line last night, and I'm going to give it to you all too. Those of you on Instagram, um, the information is money sign PIPW ministry is the cash app. Yeah, dollar sign, P-I-P-W ministry is the cash app. For those of you that use cash app and you want to sow tonight, amen. And make sure it's a pink flyer there because there's a ministry that is similar to ours and some of you have sown there and they're not going to give it back. 
all right some some have already tried but don't plant your seed there because that's not our ministry amen you want to make sure it's a pink flyer on the cash app also paypal.me slash prophetic impact once again paypal.me slash prophetic impact all right the zale account is 267 576 8358 once again the zale is 267 576 8358 all right we also have a ministry website that you can sew on and the website is www.propheticimpact1000.com all right once again our ministry's website we also have those products that i showed you all in the beginning all right we also got bless anointed oil small bottle large bottle okay if you need some oil bless anointed oil you can purchase it on the ministry's website all you got to do is click on shop and it will take you to our product small bottle large bottle okay two ounces four ounces all right i recommend the two ounces if you use oil every day for yourself personally and i recommend the four ounces for your family all right if you got a husband a wife listen you got children get the large bottle it'll last longer okay but for those of you that's using this personal personally and i also encourage you those of you that pray for people you need this you need to keep yourself anointed. Let me, let me encourage you. Keep yourself anointed. If you are, you pray for people, you know, you pray on your job and, you know, you in Walmart and you praying for people. Listen, listen, get your blessed anointed oil. Amen. I knew I was going to lose a few people right there. They getting off of Instagram. That's all right. That's all right. Because we're talking about giving. Amen. We're talking now about sacrifice. Amen. And people don't want to do that. People don't want to sacrifice. Amen. They, they just want to eat and run. But that's okay. Amen. Because there's some givers, there's some sowers that are on this live tonight. Amen. That are going to plant this seed, that are going to seal this word in Jesus' name. Once again, small bottle, large bottle, two ounces, four ounces. Amen. Get your blessed anointed oil. All right. We have many products on our website. Listen, I want to encourage you all in just a minute, but I want to give you all that golden nugget too. All right. Listen, we also have, amen. I want to show you all our fresh fire shirts. Now, listen, we're getting ready for a fresh fire revival in July. But I wanna show y'all, these just came in. Listen to this. Thank you, Evangelist. I'm gonna pin this right here. I wanna give you that golden nugget in just a minute. I ain't forget, I got y'all. Amen, listen. We got our fresh fire shirts and they come in black now. <laughs> listen, for many years, but for the last three or four years, our fresh fire, amen. We had the white shirts with the fire flame. But now, somebody shout now. We got the black ones. <laughs> Somebody say, Apostle, I want one of those. I want one of those. Listen, and always keep the sticker on. I know y'all be like, Apostle, you could take it off. No, I want to let you know ain't nobody wear this. Amen. This is the fire flame. All right. You should see it say Fresh Fire Revival. Let me see. Yeah. Prophetic Impact Prayer Ministry. Y'all see that right there? Woo. Listen, this, this shirt right here is fire. <laughs> Amen. Listen, bless, bless, bless. So we got them in black now. Amen. And we also have um, them in white with the fire flame. Those are pretty too. All right. Everybody love those. You know, the white one with the fire flame. But we're getting ready to um, launch our Fresh Fire Revival in July. Okay. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But let me give you all this golden nugget that I released on the prayer line last night. Amen. Um, Katrina says sold. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank you so much. I'm going to pray over every seed in just a minute. Amen. She sealed the word. Listen, how many more of you going to seal the word tonight? Don't let the enemy come and snatch it. Whatever you do, whatever you do. See, I'm, I'm a teaching prophet too. Amen. I don't want you, I don't want to just speak the word of the Lord to you and you just go ahead on off and you know, there's no manifestation. Amen. My job also is that you seal the word. Amen. Katrina says, I want mine. Amen. So listen. And these are, we also got these the hoodies too. We got them in black. Oh, they really nice. The black hoodie, oh, it's real nice. And the hoodie is $60. Amen. But these shirts are $25. So let me just say this. And I'm just going to keep this on me while I tell y'all real quick. So last night, the Lord had me to just speak about application. And I broke down when you fill out an application for your job. Right? Now, when you fill out that application, you know the position that you are applying for. Right? And of course you prayerful, you know, you're prayerful that you get the position, but you can't apply for the job until you put in the application. That's the same thing with God. Hmm. You might know what to do and you might even feel like, you know, you're ready for that position, but it's not until catch this revelation. 
It's not until you apply for the job that it's possible that you'll get it. See that? You can sit outside of a bank and be like, I would love to be a cashier. I would love a teller, rather. I would love to be a supervisor of this company. You can sit outside of a, five, a four, what is it? Uh, Fortune 500 company that, that that's, you know, making billions of dollars. You can sit outside in a parking lot. But if you don't ever, amen, if you don't ever fill out that application, it means nothing. So what we have to do as God's people, I feel the Holy Ghost. Listen, thank you, Lord, for your spirit. What we have to do is we have to put the word in application in order for it to work. Because see, you don't get called for the job until after you put the application in. Now listen to this part. After you put the application in, right? I see y'all sowing. I'm going to pray over every seed. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, God. Thank you. It's not until they call you. When they call you, you got to go what? On an interview. Hmm. Come on. And if you're real sharp and you want the job, you're going to study what it is that you're going to have to do before they ask you questions. See that? See that? You caught that, right? You caught that? Sister Tessa, you caught that, right? Because there's going to be others. <laughs> yes, Lord, I hear you. Who fill out for the same position. Mm. But if you're sharp to the point that where you say, you know what? I know what this job entails. Never did it before. But I know what this job entails because I researched it. So when I talk to the person that may hire me, I have a little bit of knowledge about it. Which means the person that's, that came out of the office before I stepped in the office that was applying for the same job, they might not know what I know. I'm going somewhere. Because when we get the word of God, hallelujah, hallelujah, into our spirit, we are to apply it. And it's not until we get that application of the word. Who am I talking to? Hallelujah. It is not until we get the application of that word and start applying that word. Hallelujah. That we begin to see now what is called manifestation. See, you can know about the job and never apply for it. You'll never get it either. You can know the word. She said, can I see the shirt, please? Yes, Ramona, you came on late. <laughs> I'm going to show the shirt one more time. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Come on, somebody. It is time, hallelujah, to know the word and apply the word now. Come on, it is time for application. Because now we need manifestation. Come on, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name name glory to god i want to give you this last key point and i want to give you amen just a little bit more about the application that i shared on the prayer line amen a prophet or a prophetess is a special gift to say what god says let that let that sink in for a minute a prophet or a prophetess is a special gift To say what God says. It's not ordinary. This is why prophets are different. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. And see, I talked about school. I talked about going to prophetic school to be able to understand the prophetic. But when you have when you have pastors who are being ordained, because let me let me tell you, pastors have to be and they call shepherds or shepherdress, male, female. They have to be licensed or ordained as a pastor. Which means they have to go through a certain amount of schooling and teaching to be able to even teach. But the prophet. Can I help you all? Because even when you see people ordaining prophets, that's out of order. The prophet doesn't have to be ordained. Hmm. The prophet <laughs> is ordained when they come out of their mother's belly. When they come to the earth. <laughs> come on here. Hallelujah. That's... <laughs> 
Somebody going to catch that in a minute. Hallelujah. Because prophets are born. Hallelujah. Prophets, we are born. Can you, can you see the shirt? Can you see it, woman of God? You see it? You see it? I believe it was Ramona. You asked to see the shirt. Amen. I had it, but I know y'all can't really see it. Yes, but prophets, we are born, right? I'm holding it up here, y'all. I'm, <laughs> I'm holding up the shirt. I know y'all can see it on YouTube. I can see it real clear. I know y'all can see it on yet, but y'all can't really see it because I'm not sitting up too much. But anyway, we're going to leave it right here. Let me just leave it here while I'm talking. Somebody going to get this anointed t-shirt. But anyway, <laughs> um, prophets are born, right? So you don't need an ordination for a prophet. Come on. But a pastor has to be licensed and ordained to be a pastor. Even though you have different churches and ministries who ordain past, I mean, who ordain prophets, if that's what they do, that's what they do. But the prophet is born. Hallelujah. We, we are born a prophet. Come on. And can nobody make you a prophet. Now somebody can make you a pastor. Come on. And they can make you certain things or put you in different offices. But the office of the prophet, you birthed out as a prophet. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are birthed out as prophets. Amen. I ain't getting no amens, but that's all right. That's all right. Amen. I pray that you all were blessed by this teaching tonight. You know, the difference of the pastor versus the prophet. It was so prophetic, so powerful tonight. Amen. So anointed. Amen. Because how do we know the spirit of the Lord is here? Hallelujah. And the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. There is freedom. Hallelujah. So some of you, amen, have a greater knowledge, a greater revelation now. Amen. Of the, the, the office of the, okay, she said I want a 3X. I got you, Ramona. Can you inbox me? Inbox me, all right? I'll get that t-shirt for you. Amen. Amen. There's my sister, Prophetess Sharia. God bless you, my sister. <laughs> yes, God bless you tonight. Amen. There's a difference. You know, there's a difference. And so if you have a pastor who is a prophet, you are blessed because you get both. You get both. But just know that when your pastor shifts and the prophet comes out of them, don't get offended. Don't get upset because that part is what you need at that time. You understand? That's the part that you need. Amen. From your pastor who is a prophet. But just know that if your pastor is a prophet, the prophet overrides the pastor part. Amen. Because, because listen, the pastor, that can be dropped. In other words, and I said it earlier, I'm going to say it again. The pastor, listen, we can walk away from the church. In other words, we can walk away. We could close the doors of our church. You know, those of us that pastor, right? Amen. Pastor Sharia, right? But she's a prophet also. You see, we, we can walk away from that, but we can never walk away from being a prophet. We will, hallelujah. We will always be the prophet of God. Always, always. You understand? And so the, the pastor, pastoral ship is something that we have taken on. And as I taught in the beginning, it comes with so much. Amen. It comes with so much compassion and love for people and love for God's people. Amen. So, so the pastor is equipped before they walk into pastoral ship. But it's also something that they also desire. Amen. You have to desire the office of the pastor. Amen. And you have to be graced. Amen. To be a pastor. So, you know, with that being said, I pray that you all were blessed tonight. We're at the end of the word. It's 118 in the morning. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I think we started about what? Quarter to 11 or something like that. We started about quarter to 11. So to God be the glory. Amen. Once again, we have some ministry products. Go to the website. All right. This is our Fresh Fire shirt for those that want to purchase the black one. And once again, this is new. This is our new Fresh Fire revival shirt. So, you know, with that being said, you can go to the website. Uh, we also have prayer to leads. Amen. Some call them prayer shawls. All right. And you can purchase those as well. It's a point of contact. Amen. For you to, you can pray in it. You can listen. Some people just wrap up in it and go to sleep. You know, I, I know some people that do that. Amen. It's a point of contact. Amen. Glory to God. And it has great purpose. Amen. So we also do have ministry products, Bless Anointed Oil. Amen. You can go to the website and you can purchase your products. All right. Listen, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray us out. Amen. I'm going to pray over every seed that has been sown on tonight. Amen. Make sure that you name your seed. 
All right, if you have sown on tonight, name your seed, all right? Here in this ministry, we always send our seed on assignment. What does that mean? Every time you sow into the kingdom of God, name your seed, all right? Name your seed, amen? Name your seed, which means you're putting your seed on assignment, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God, we thank you on this morning, oh God. We say thank you for the word on tonight. Thank you for this here, your people, oh God. Every leader, oh God, that has graced his broadcast. Hallelujah. Every member of PIPW ministry, oh God. Each and every person under the sound of my voice that has joined in tonight and has partook of this teaching tonight. Father, we say thank you. Father God, we love you tonight. Hallelujah. We thank you for your spirit even now that is still yet moving. Hallelujah. In this atmosphere, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, we say thank you right now for all things, oh God. Hallelujah. Continue to perfect us, oh God, in your word. Hallelujah. Continue, Father, I pray. Hallelujah. Those things that are inside of us, God, that are not like you, oh God, that you would, you would take them out of us, God. You would uproot those things. Hallelujah. So that we could be more like you. In the name of Jesus, yes, God, that we would get a greater understanding of who you are. Hallelujah. By way of your spirit, Father. In the name of Jesus, yes, God. For there are those on tonight, hallelujah, that desire more of you. There are those, hallelujah, yes, God, I hear you, hallelujah, that the deep is calling unto the deep Lord tonight. There are those, Father God, who are hungry for your word, hallelujah, and they have received your word on tonight. Oh, God, continue to fill them up for your glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, God, continue to fill your people up, even with your spirit on tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, God. And even those, yes, God, I hear you. Hallelujah. That need their joy to come back, Father. I pray tonight that you will restore unto them the joy of their salvation. Glory to God. That you will give them back their joy. Give them back their peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those things that the enemy has stolen. Yes, God. Hallelujah. So that they can give you another yes, Father. Oh, God, restore Restore those things back to them tonight, I pray, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, that we will be all that you have called us to be, hallelujah, in these last and evil days, Father God, in the name of Jesus, yes, God, that we will be all, hallelujah, that you have called us to be, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, I call forth right now the fivefold ministry, hallelujah, every apostle, every pastor, every prophet, every teacher, every evangelist, in the name of Jesus, yes, God, that they will rise up. Up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In their holy calling. Yes, God. That they will rise up. Hallelujah. In these last and evil days. That they will decree and declare your word mm, in the name of Jesus. That they would teach. Hallelujah. In season and out of season. They will preach your word in season and out of season. Yes, Father. Oh, God, we say thank you on tonight. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. For raising up the fivefold ministry even now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, God. That your word. Hallelujah. Will continue to be proclaim in the earth from yes god that your word will continue to go forth hallelujah with power and conviction in the name of Jesus, yes, God, hallelujah, hey, hey, glory to God, hallelujah, that even revival will begin to break out in the land, hallelujah, that revival will begin to break out in different cities and states, oh God, that your people are represented in, in tonight, hallelujah, in, in the name of Jesus, yes, God, we thank you even now, hallelujah, hallelujah, that even those that you have called and chosen for such a time as this, hallelujah, they will give you another yes, ah, glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. They will give you another yes. Hallelujah. Yes to your will and yes to your way. Yes, we will obey you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, I lift up every seed before you even now. Hallelujah. The few that were on the broadcast that sold tonight. Yes, Lord, we say thank you for every seed that has been sown out of obedience. Mm. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. God, we know it's not the amount of the seed, but it's our obedience. Yes, God. So, Father, I pray right now, God, hallelujah, that you will bless even their obedience, that you will increase, hallelujah, their obedience to you, Father. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Breathe upon every seed, I pray, oh God. Oh God, send some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Hallelujah. According to your word, oh God. And bless every seed on tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Even those, hallelujah, that may watch the replay, oh God, that are going to sow into the word.
word and sow into the anointing, my God, and seal, hallelujah, what you have spoken on tonight so that manifestation can come forth. Mm, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray even for those that are getting ready to sow, hallelujah, even those that are going to sow, hallelujah, that watch the replay, yes, God, in the name of Jesus, Father, that there will be manifestation in their lives. Yes, Lord, hallelujah. And even those that didn't have to sow tonight, that wanted to give, oh God, I pray for them as well, Father. You said you would give seed unto the sower and bread to those who are hungry. Yes, Lord. And water to those who are thirsty. So, Father, I pray tonight, those that didn't have seed to sow, that you would give them seed to sow, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. And, Father, we thank you for it now. We praise you for it now. We bless you for it now, oh God. And it's in Jesus' mighty name I do pray. And I seal this word in the blood of Jesus and I count it done in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And amen to God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory. We're going to exit on tonight. I don't want to hold you all any longer. Amen. But I thank God for every person on YouTube. Blessings upon blessings to each and every one of you.